Good morning. I want to welcome all of you to our worship service this morning. If you are joining us by way of internet, as I'm sure you are, uh, we want to make you especially welcome. Perhaps you're not familiar with the Holden Beach Chapel. We are an interdenominational place of worship. Our history has been that we embrace all of the Christian uh, communities of faith. And normally, we have a different minister each week from different denominations who comes and speaks. Of course, the last few weeks has been difficult, but we're trying to do the best we can with that. So I want you to know that uh, we will continue, and hopefully, very soon, we're going to be back in this beautiful sanctuary as we come together uh, once again for the communion of the saints. <clears throat> Everyone knows, ministers <clears throat> around the world have for a long time lamented the fact that the Sunday after Easter is always, almost always, low attendance Sunday. Well, through no fault of your own, let me tell you, this year on low attendance Sunday, you have outdone yourself. You have done an exceedingly outstanding job in low attendance Sunday, but actually we are together. We're just not together in one place, but hopefully that will change soon. It's always wonderful to welcome you, and I pray that you will experience the presence of the Lord in your own life this day. And now, <clears throat> may we go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. Our souls, nearly overwhelmed by the circumstances of life, often seem fragile or broken. Today, there are many of us who feel that we are at our wit's end. But today, Lord, we also claim your promise. As we cry out to you, please hear our pleas. We are assured that you do and that you answer us. You bring us out of our distresses and stand with us on solid ground. We rejoice that while the storms of life around us are raging, there is within also a calming peace that passes all of our understanding. We thank you and we praise you for your guiding hand. May your peace reign within us all the days of our life, especially during these trying days. And may your wonderful works among your children be made known to the whole world. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I mentioned a moment ago that we are accustomed to having ministers from around the country, each week a different minister, a different denomination to speak. And although our minister is not here today, we have reached out to them and asked them if they would provide a sermon or perhaps a, a one-out uh, Bible study that they could submit to us. And so that has happened today. Bill Leathers, Dr. Bill Leathers is our speaker today. He has very graciously sent a video that he will share with us. He is a retired Baptist minister currently living in Winston-Salem. He is a good demon deacon as a graduate of Wake Forest University. He did his um, theology training at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and also at Emory University. He has served as a pastor in Appling, Georgia, and also as the senior pastor at the First Baptist Church of Rockingham and the First Baptist Church of Hickory, North Carolina. Since his retirement, he has served as the interim pastor of five congregations. He and his wife, Crystal, have two children and three grandchildren. Today, we welcome, for your listening, the Reverend Dr. Bill Leathers. Hello, people at Holden Beach. It's good to be with you today, if even by uh, the magic of video and all of the technology. And I want to thank you for the opportunity of uh, our being together for a few moments. Today is the 19th of April. It is in the church year called the second year of Easter. Also a really unusual time. I think all of us are, are finding it that way. Uh, we've never quite lived through a time like this before. The virus having to shelter in place, changing plans. Uh, after all, Crystal and I had hoped to be with you at the beach this week. And we even had planned the week after that to go camping down at Huntington Beach State Park, which is south of Myrtle Beach. 
but the changes came. Uh, I don't know about you, but but for me, uh, it, it has been something of a roller coaster, an up and down, uh, uh, hoping that that the virus would not be as bad as we have feared, fearing that it's worse than we've been told, uh, hoping and fearing and it's created anxiety. It's created separation as we've had to be separated from our loved ones and our friends and our churches can't meet together. It's just really a different time. As I looked at our biblical passage for today, which is from Luke chapter 24, it occurred to me that the story that the Bible is telling us for this second Sunday of Easter is a story that relates to what we're going through now, because it tells us about a roller coaster experience that the followers of Jesus had. I want to reach over here and get my Bible and for you this passage from Luke chapter 24, beginning with the 13th verse. Now, on the same day, the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place there in these days? He, the stranger, asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he, the stranger, said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory then? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he opened the scripture to us? While he talked with us on the road, 
that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Just like today is a roller coaster for us. This day when these two men were walking the seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus must have been a roller coaster for them. And it had all it had all happened in the last two or three days. As they were walking along deep in conversation, they were joined by a, a stranger, a person they did not recognize. He noticed that they were talking about serious things and, and he wanted to know what, what it was they were saying. And so he asked them, what are you talking about? They must have looked at him as I would look at someone who would come up to me today and say, what's all this talk about a coronavirus? I haven't heard anything about it. Can, can you tell me about it? They looked at him and said, are you the only person in Jerusalem who, who hasn't heard what's been happening with, with Jesus? Tell me, he said. And then they began to tell him, began to tell him about how they had first met Jesus, how his words and his personality and just something about him had drawn them, and how great their hopes had been. They had hoped that Jesus would be the one to save their country and, and to make the world a better place. But then they said their hopes had been dashed. Jesus had, Jesus had run into trouble with very powerful people, some of them religious leaders, some of them political leaders. And finally, their opposition to him had become so great, the sense of threat that they had felt from him had become so great that they had had him arrested and put on trial and humiliated and executed by crucifixion. They said, to the stranger, they said, we, we've been trying to deal with this. It really has been an up and down. We had hoped and our hopes were dashed. But you know, just this morning, now the death happened just two to three days ago, but just this morning, some women in our group went to the tomb to anoint his dead body. But they came running back to tell our group that when they had gotten there, the tomb was empty. And they said they had had a vision with angels, and the angels had said to them that Jesus is alive. When the women came back to where the men who followed Jesus were staying, some of the men ran to the tomb also. And they verified what the women had said, that the body was not there. The dead body was gone. And an angel told them that Jesus is alive. They were walking along, the stranger listening as these two men poured out their hearts as they shared with him the the ups and downs that they had been going through, the hopes and the disappointments, the anxiety and all of those things that we are experiencing now. And when you think about it, it's not, for most of us, it's not the first time we have had 
an experience of the roller coaster. It certainly is happening now. The, the virus is real. The threat is real. The fear is real. But perhaps like me, you can remember other times. It might have been something happening in our work. It might have been a painful experience in our family. It might have been the loss of a loved one. It might have been some threat that was perceived in our town or in our country. We've had other times of ups and downs. Times, times when we are not sure what's happening around us, not sure what the future is going to hold for us. The men were walking along. The stranger had been listening to them. And now the stranger spoke. He said to them, you have been blind to what is really happening. Your heart has been slow to believe. That, that phrase really spoke to me. Your heart has been slow to believe. And then the stranger began to talk about their own Holy Scriptures, their own Bible, which would be what we call the Old Testament. And it went back to Moses and the prophets and began to show them, to explain to them how in their own Scriptures, their holy writings had pointed to the fact that God was going to send a Messiah. And that when that Messiah came, the Messiah would have to suffer and die but that this would all be part of God's process, God loving the world by sending his son, the Messiah, to save the world. The stranger was giving these two men an opportunity to reinterpret what they were seeing and what they were experiencing. And I think this story is trying to give that to us also. They were coming close to the village of Emmaus. Night was falling, it was getting dark. The stranger acted as if he were going to walk on. The, the two who had now become his acquaintance said to him, why don't you come and stay with us tonight? It'll be safer. It's getting dark. You can stay with us. So come and stay at our home. And the stranger did. Luke tells us that later that evening when they sat down to supper, there was bread on the table. I suspect that was usually the case. Luke says the stranger took the bread and he prayed over it. He blessed it. And then he broke it and he handed it to his two friends. And at that moment, they recognized who he was. It was Jesus. The whole time, it had been Jesus. And suddenly, suddenly, they were able to reinterpret what they were seeing. This story invites us today to reinterpret what we are seeing. In the early days of our full awareness of the coronavirus when we were being told that the following Sunday we could not, should not worship together when 
we were being told to shelter in place and all of the precautions that we ought to take when we were being told that probably we should not see our adult children or our grandchildren, that we should change any travel plans, all of those things. My anxiety was growing. And I sensed it in the people around me and the people in my neighborhood here in Winston-Salem and my friends and in my church. What was this going to mean for us? Would it, would it be, as we hoped, a process that would allow us to get back to normal in a month or two? Or would it be, as we feared, something that would take a year or more and touch many, many lives in a hurtful way? On a Tuesday morning, uh, it was about a month and a week or two ago in early March, we received an email from our backdoor neighbors. Jennifer and Samuel had written and had written to the whole neighborhood and had offered themselves to help any of us who needed help. And most of us in our cluster home neighborhood are age 60 and older, some a good bit older. Jennifer and Samuel are probably about 50. And in their email, they said, we're working from home now. We want you to know that, that we, will be, we will be glad to help you in any way that we can. If you need groceries, if you need medicine from the pharmacy, if you need to be taken to a doctor, please let us know. And if we possibly can, we will help you. All of us are in this together, they said. And we want you to know that we are here. You know, in a sense, that was a small thing. It was just an email. It was an offer. But for me, it was a big thing. And it began to help me reinterpret what I was seeing. As it happened, I'd also been reading an article in the Christian Century, which is a <coughs> journal that I get. And the writer had been saying that so often those of us who are people of faith look to other times to find examples of when things were good for us spiritually. We look back to the Reformation or some other time to, to find examples of when uh, things were going well for God's people. And the writer said, when we do that, we, we often may miss the fact that God, that God is present with us today just as much as he was in some other day. It reminded me of that familiar verse in Psalm 118, I think it's verse 24, that says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it suddenly dawned on me. It suddenly dawned on me, on my heart, that sometimes is so slow to believe that this day, coronavirus and all, just like any day, is the Lord's day. And in some way, with his help, we are called to rejoice and be glad in it and to express that joy, to express that joy by loving others the way God has loved us. Luke tells us that in the, the seeing of Jesus when he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, suddenly these two men realized that what they had been going through the last three days, the, the dashed hopes, the, the roller coaster of life, what they, what they suddenly were able to see was this was not an ultimate defeat. 
Instead, it was an ultimate victory. And isn't that the story of Easter? That Christ is alive. And because he is alive, we live. We are people of hope. And we, we decide what we do based on what God has taught us through Christ. This morning, we are being offered the opportunity to reinterpret what we see. To do it through our experience with Jesus, to do it through our understanding of his word, to do it as we pay attention to the gentle nudgings of his Holy Spirit so that we can see that today as every day is a day that the Lord has made. And every day that comes will be a day that the Lord has made. I'm not sure everything that that will mean for me. Certainly, not, I don't know what it will mean for you, but I think it will mean as I look at my life, I will look for the places that God is at work and that the, the Spirit of God is nudging me toward. And in some way, I will try to be involved there in ways that are appropriate to the ways that we're being asked to shelter right now. It may mean that there's some personal thing that I need to pay attention to, some relationship that needs tending, some dream that needs following, some prayer that needs praying, some gift that needs giving, some act of forgiveness that needs to be offered, some word of encouragement that needs to be said. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad. May God bless you. May God use us to bless the world in this roller coaster time as we live out the Easter truth that this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad that we serve a risen Savior. He lives. Amen.